This meeting is being recorded. Hi, I'm Kate Floss, Citizen Minister from the Ministry of Deconfusion, coming to let you know, everybody know what's going on in the countries of our Commonwealth of England, uh, England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, New Zealand and Australia. The focus is there. We've been taken over by America and Canada and they've decided to take us out of all of our um, Commonwealth laws that we've known uh, for, that our parents and grandparents and ancestors fought hard for. They're trying to remove them and they're trying to put us under um, some kind of a tribal law, which is a mix of the various religions and the tribes in our countries and um, it's just chaos. So I've come to deconfuse you. Uh, one of the things is you'll look up on my board here and introduce some of the people that um, that we're looking at in the Ministry of Kate, in the Ministry of Deconfusion. We've got, of course, Queen Elizabeth II. And Queen Elizabeth II has been with us for more than 70 years. And what you're experiencing now is a changeover that they're getting ready for the changeover over from Her Majesty the Queen to His Majesty the King, King he will be King Charles and Queen Camilla. So they're getting ready for this, but um, there's a, now that this, this is a very, very important time in our history, this hasn't happened in 70 years. And the other, the pre longest reigning monarch was um, Queen Victoria, who was very instrumental in all of our countries. And uh, previous to that, it was the king. Now, um, now that they know that the, 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 there's going to be a change of monarch, um, the whole world has gone into a frenzy to get hold of all the countries that are in the Commonwealth. Now, some of the countries have protected themselves, America, Canada, and all the Pacific Islands. They all protected themselves. Even Australia has protected themselves. But for some unknown reason, England, Scotland, Ireland, the ones in the UK, the United Kingdom. Now, Australia is a little bit different because New Zealand has got a direct covenant with the United Kingdom, which is separate from Australia. So ours is a little, we're kind of the same, but a little bit different, but our five countries are in there. But anyway, um, New Zealand would be the most vulnerable of all of our countries. It was like, it's like the Commonwealth, was 54 countries, now it's down to 14 countries. They're picking us off one by one, but we know that America is after the Pacific and uh, and China and Russia are upset about all of this, what's going on. So I'm here to try and dead confuse you as best you can. As I would say to you, I'm, I'm not a qualified person, of course, I've got, got a high school education, so you'll definitely have to go and research all of this and this is for entertainment purposes only. Next one on the book is the highest one of all is Almighty Our Jesus. It's Jesus, I was going to say Almighty God, but Jesus. That we know that Jesus, he's up there on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. And what had happened is that um, the three religions of the Catholic, the, um, the Jewish religion, the Torah and the Islamic religion, they had been fighting for hundreds of years. And uh, as you all know that Jesus was put on the cross, Jesus came and he, he rejected, he rejected all the churches and he rejected all their religions. And he said that, you know, most of the laws that you've got there are not of God. God never would have made a law that you, those laws that you've made there. And everyone was trying to get out of being under the laws of these three religions and Jesus was killed for it. And that's why we remember Jesus. Now, Jesus came back in 1688 and he left us the will of Mary which is the will of almighty God and the will of Mary controls the three well actually it's four because you've got the common law you've got the Torah and the Ptolemaid or the Torah you've got the Islamic Quran you've got the Catholic um, book of Job I think it's called You've got all of those things. And then you've got the 1688 will of Almighty God. And this is why you hear a lot of people. I never used to understand what they used to say to me about one God, that there was one God, which was Almighty God, 
no matter which one that they thought was their God, that governed over and restricted all of them. And that all comes under the 1688 will and Mary. The problem is that none of these religions like it because it restricts them too much from getting in and controlling all of us. Now, um, the next one we've got here is Tamati Wakanene. Tamati Wakanene was in New Zealand. Now, all of the birth certificates, it might surprise you to know that we didn't have birth certificates pre-1846, although Germany had created it. But the people that did have all the birth records and the birth corporations were the three religions or any religions. So you started a religion and you got as many people as you could. When you had enough people in it, all their lands went into your corporation. And then those lands and what they did in that corporation affected only those people. That's how they used to do it, all right? And so, um, uh, but, but in 1835, uh, Tamati Wakanene worked with, uh, worked with the king, uh, King William IV, I think it was. And then um, Tamati Wakanene uh, was there when Queen Victoria ascended to the throne. And he worked with Queen Victoria to bring Jesus' uh, law of Almighty God into New Zealand and Australia and the islands. And then Tamati Wakanene was there in 1865 when the Queen's law was proclamated over all of our nations. And uh, he was there right from the very beginning, right back from 1820, all the way through to 1865 when the Queen's law was proclamated to be the law of New Zealand. And it was, and it's presently they've been trying to remove it. So this is where our um, problem lies. Oh, who else have we got here? Now, what I've done is we've been trying to go to the court to get declarations, and I've called to the court um, Andrew Little, you'll be hearing about him in a minute, Jacinda Aragorn, Chris Farfoy, and Ashley Bloomfield. Now, we've only called them to court to ask them questions. When you call to them, them to the court, using the 1688 Bill of Rights. Nobody is prosecuted but of anything. They're not even called defendants, they're called respondents. And you're permitted to call them to the court and ask them about questions of law that you may have. Now I'll get to that in a minute, but I'll, I'll just say this to you, that they've been blocking people from getting into the court. One of the things they've been using is they said that we're a corporation and since we're a corporation, a layman is not allowed to represent a corporation. And then the other one they've been saying is fees. They strike you out, and even if you appeal it, they lay on you $14,000 worth of fees, and, and they, they're a little bit tricky, really. They lay on you $14,000. I've read another case, and they've got a tick box, and you can tick in the box and say, um, right, I'm going to make this video 45 minutes from now. Uh, they've got a tick box, and, and when you click, it, it says in the tick box that um, if, you, if you did not get your fee waived, would you continue with this case? One of the criteria to get a fee waived is that if you say that you, you're not able to continue with this case, if you say you're not able to continue with this case if you don't get your fee waiver, then you often will get your fee waiver. But be careful about ticking that because just luckily for me, I read another case. So you've gone from the high court strike you out called the process of the court. Now they only brought in this law process of the court in 2016, saying that uh, they would consider you if you weren't a solicitor as unintelligible to attend the court. That's how they, they did it like that unless you had a point of law. Um, now, um, and so they've been blocking people from that. Now they throw you out as, on abusive process saying that you're unintelligible. And then when you appeal it, you go to the appeals court and then you have to fight about their abuse of process of the court and the strike out. That's where I am at the moment where I'm fighting that. Now, <clears throat> when I um, uh, went and looked at another case, when he applied for the fee waiver where they hit you with $14,000 worth of fees, um, he applied for the fee waiver based on that if he didn't get the fee waiver, he wouldn't be able to proceed with his case. Well, when his case went to the appeals court judge, 
he said, you know what, mate, if I send you back to the High Court, even, if, even though you are correct, and I should let you win this case because they should not have struck you out. He said, the, the, if I send you back to the High Court and, um, and you lose that case, you probably would want to appeal that case and you might even have to appeal it all the way to the Supreme Court. And he said, since you ticked that you can't even pay for this case right here now, and you got into this case for free, he said it would be irresponsible of me as a judge to send you back to the High Court because you obviously wouldn't have the money to pay for a High Court and an appeal in a Supreme Court. So he said, I, I don't want to put you in that position and I'm being your friend here. And so therefore that he, he declined the appeal based on those reasons. So don't click that box. <laughs> but I'm under a whole nother one now because I'm saying under the 1688 Bill of Rights that we have the right to petition to the King and all commitments for doing so are illegal. That means they cannot commit you or prosecute you. Uh, they cannot commit you to paying fees if as long as you're only using the will of Mary, you have to be using the will of Mary. <clears throat> if you're using anything else, then you won't be able to use this particular law. Okay. Now I want to talk to you today. So that's that's just where we are and why all of those are up there. Now I want to talk to you today about a dream that I had. And you'll understand about this dream. I seem to be getting these dreams, so I'm just going to tell the dream. And you'll understand about the dream. Uh, when I get to the end of my thing. So in my dream, there was a big house and uh, I, was, I was offered this huge, beautiful, beautiful mansion. It was so beautiful. It was like two stories, had all the furniture, everything. And the condition was that I had to go and live with this lovely couple called Will and Mary. I call them Will and Mary now in my waking life but I don't know who they were called in there, but they were beautiful. I'll tell you something. They were very, very, very beautiful. So the condition was that I received this house that I needed to, um, that I needed to live with Will and Mary for a certain amount of time. Now, when I went to live with Will and Mary, I was so happy and I was happy in my house and I loved them and everything. And then one day uh, in, in my dream, in my dream, uh, they said to me, now, now that you've been in the house and now that you know all the many rooms of the house, now you have to go, you have to live here on your own and with other people. And they said that we're leaving. And in my dream, I was crying and crying and saying, why are you leaving? Because I thought that the deal was that you were going to stay here with me. And Will and Mary said, no, I can't, I'm not able to stay there with you, but I've given you these things that you can do, these rules that you can follow for your house. And they said, and as long as you follow these rules, you're going to be fine in your house, okay? And so Will and Mary left. Now, they said, uh, so this is the plan that you need to follow. And in my waking interpretation is that that's my 1688 Bill of Rights. The, uh, I call it the Will and Mary. They call it the Bill of Rights now, but it's actually called the Will. So that's our 1688 well from Almighty God uh, to manage ourselves. Um, after Will and Mary had left, uh, there was many traveling around and, and several bits of the dream that I couldn't remember. But anyway, then it, when I went back to the house, the house had expanded and the house had become many houses all attached on one. And when I started to go through the rooms of the house, in one of the rooms were two homosexual males, two homosexual males, and their house looked beautiful. Everything was in order. Um, it was clean and they were very happy together and it looked very good. Um, but uh, at that point, I decided to leave the house. And I left the house and I went outside and I took my will with me and as I went outside of the house I looked at the house and the whole house was starting to crumble it was falling apart it was a huge like in my dream I was looking up the house was so high so tall so big and I was looking up and the pieces of the roof and the pieces of the house 
started to fall down all around me. And um, that was the end of my dream. You might understand it a little bit later when we get to the end. So now I wanted to tell you, I want to I, that, remember that this is the Ministry of Deconfusion, all right? The Ministry of Deconfusion. And I'm Kate Floss, a minister in the Ministry of Deconfusion. And I'm just only a citizen minister. And so all of this is for entertainment purposes only. But what you will know is that, in my opinion, we are at war. I'm sorry to tell you, in, in, in England, Scotland, Ireland, um, uh, Wales, Australia and New Zealand and the islands, although we don't know who we're at war against, but I will tell you, we are at war from within and we are at war from without. So it's the war from within that's causing us a lot of confusion. You're going to have many people coming to you. You're going to have the people from the Jewish groups coming to you. You're going to have them from the Muslim groups coming to you. You're going to have them from all the Christian groups coming from you. You're going to have them from the so-called indigenous groups. And they're all going to be saying to you, follow me, follow me. You're going to have countries trying to get you into the corporation. Every single one of these groups that calls you into their corporation, um, it, they are all corporations, all of them. And they're all fighting over the booty that's going to become available when Her Majesty reaches her demise. So that's what they're all fighting about. The kings, the queens, the popes, the the religious leaders, the ecclesiastical leaders, they're all fighting about it. And we're just the people on the ground. We are the insignificant people that we will be we will be moved wherever it is. They say we'll be moved. We don't have any say. So um, what I'm coming to say to you now is that I will show you here, go to share. So, um, Where's my share screen? So I'll go to my windows and I'll go to here. So what you'll see here what you'll see here is that um, oh where's the story? Can I get the story? Oh, I don't know how. Well, anyway, the Daily Mail. All right, here it is here. So this is the Daily Mail. I'm not sure if I can. Um, all right, I better be careful about um, sharing on this because I might get my video blocked. Um, so the Daily Mail is just saying, uh, all right, I better turn it off, actually, because I, I think I might not be allowed it in my video. Um, but anyway, the Daily Mail, Mail is talking about a thing called AUKUS, AUKUS or ALCA. It's called Australian, A, UK and US. Now, whenever you're thinking about the UK, it's a very dangerous thing because New Zealand thinks that they're not involved. But New Zealand is in a direct covenant with the United Kingdom and we always have been since pre-1820, actually. And, um, and so this is called Australia, UK and US. Now, the, the United States is not under um, United Kingdom law. It's a different law base. And theirs is the inalienable laws and ours comes from the common law. Now, all laws, all laws start with a declaration and all laws end with a declaration. And, it's, and that's what I'm saying to you is that I'll try to do my best to, to make a good video, but what I'm saying to you is laws aren't made in Parliament. The laws, all the laws that are made in Parliament are subordinate laws and they can all be changed at the flick of a pen. And they mean absolutely nothing. All the laws that are made in Parliament are bills to you. The corporation that you're in, the country that you live in is the country and you, you birth back to 1846. That is the corporation that you are in, unless you belong to one of those four religions, in which case 
when you're seven years old, you go to get baptized and you go into their corporation. If you've not been baptized, then you stay in the corporation of your country. It depends which corporation you're in, which laws that you're under. If you're a Protestant and you're not in any of those religions, then that means that you come under almighty God's law that is for all of us. So, um, that, and that is, and that is <coughs> when you get a declaration made. So if you really want to have an effective change in a law, the place to change it isn't in a petition to parliament. You've got to get yourself into the court and, um, and it's in the court that you'll get a declaration and if you get a declaration from the court, that then is a law that will last for all times. It can never, ever, ever be changed. That they're saying first in time, best in law. When the Torah was created, that was the first of its kind. When the um, Quran was created, that was the first of its kind. When the Magna Carta was created, that was the first of its kind. When the Cap canon law was created, that was the first of its kind. They can never, ever, ever be removed, ever. And that's why the people of those religions are not permitted to govern over us. Because if you're not in one of those corporations, you go into the corporation of Protestant, which is the 1688 Almighty God's corporation that restricts all of them. That is called the restrictor. When any one of those religions or those corporations makes a law or does an action that is repugnant to, to Almighty God, the one Almighty God, then you can go to the court and you can get a declaration to say to them, even to say to the Pope, that this is repugnant. Now, now I'm not going to go too much into these laws, but what I'm just going to tell you is that we are at war and the essence of the war is about all about the Queen's law. In 1972, American law took over all of the countries of our five Commonwealth countries. The law was taken over in 1972. It's called Lexus Nexus. And the, the um, Butterworths that did the Queen's law was closed down and taken over by an American company called LexisNexis. Now, LexisNexis was thrown out of China and China is angry with this new partnership of all cuss because it's not agreeable to the laws that we're now under of this LexisNexis because it's giving them too much power. And I kind of agree. Now, um, LexisNexis, is only in power in six states of America. I'm not sure what those six states are. And then Lexus Nexus was proclamated and brought into the laws of New Zealand in 2020, and it was brought into the UK, all the United Kingdom, and this is why we're in so much trouble. Now, let me see. So Lexus Nexus. Now, what has happened is, um, make sure I've told you everything here. So that's the Torah, the Quran, and the canon law, right? And the pre-common law where you had no laws at all, if you weren't in those religions, and they all come under the 1688 Will of Mary. But the 1688 Will of Mary is kind of repugnant because it's got a supremacy law that says none of those religions can govern over you. And so I'm going to do another video about it, but I'll just quickly mention it. They're saying to me, a lady said to me, why can't the Muslims govern over you and your country? Why can't the Jews govern over you and your country? Why can't the Catholics, why aren't they, they, they've put the, they have filled our parliaments with Muslims, Jews and Catholics, and they have said that they can now govern over us. And I'm saying that that's repugnant. And why is that, why can't they govern? So I've been accused of being racist and discriminatory, but in an actual fact, in their three texts were the first laws in time. And once those laws were brought out by the printing press, the problem was the printing press, you might be wondering yourself, why, why were all these, um, why were the Bibles rewritten again and again and again and again? What you would think to yourself, why would 
Why would they not just have it if it was so sacred and it was so true? Why wouldn't they just keep the one that they had? And why were people destroying it? And I'll tell you why. Because the Jewish, the, the Jewish, the Torah is, and the Talmud is only for Jewish people. The Quran is only for Islamic people. The canon law is only for Catholic people. And each of those three laws that they wrote themselves have got um, um, decapitation laws, burning alive laws, um, decapitation of your limbs, cutting out of your tongue, cutting off of your hands, um, cutting off of your feet, um, um, four quartering where they strung the four arms, they strung uh, the four, the two arms, the two legs up to four horses. It was called four quartering. And they would put them on four horses and then they would whack the horses as hard as they could and the limbs of the body would be pulled apart from the person and their entrails would fall down into the street. It, 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 it was, this, these were the things that were permitted under those four first in time best in law. Now those laws, um, what was happening was that people kept destroying these Bibles. People that were not involved with these religions kept, those books were all handwritten. There was no printing press. They were all handwritten. So people just kept destroying them and they kept rewriting them and destroying them and rewriting them. That's what happened in Kate Floss's strange world. And when the printing press came, that was the end of it. They were never able to destroy them ever again. And all those laws remained for all times to come. And so the, what could they do? They could never, ever remove them. So they created the 1688 Bill of Rights that everybody agreed on as one almighty God, which had just a few laws that everyone could follow. And if you see, the Catholic Church is a huge corporation and it's got its own state, all right? The Jews in Israel, they've got their own state. And so they are considered to be foreign states. And the Muslims in, in their country over in, I don't know which one is their specific one, but I think it's actually, it might be in Egypt. But the Muslims, the Islamists, they've got their own state which carries the law of their book of whichever book that it is. And the queen carries the law of the 1688 of Almighty God that is kind of the umbrella of restriction over all of them. And so that's how the only way that they were able to work it out because you, once a law has been printed, it can't ever be deleted. So all you can do is make another law to, to save the people that were not included or whatever you do. So um, if you look at the 1688 Bill of Rights, um, I'll go to the, so, so the, the, the submarines are coming from Britain to um, Australia. They're on the way to protect the South Pacific, but we know that America is fighting over the Pacific. What they're fighting over, there's a huge battle going on here. And I don't really know who's who because it's like America and the Mormon church, they already own all the Pacific Islands and they're fighting to get New Zealand into their realm. Now we've got Australia, I'm not quite sure whether they wanna go over to America or whether they wanna stay with England. England, I'm not sure if they're going over to America or they're trying to, keep their comment. I really don't know what's going on in the heavenly realm. I call it the heavenly realm where they all battle over the lands of the countries of the world. But you, you're not in that fight, all right? You're not in that fight, but what you've got to do is think about what your protections are in this time of confusion. You're not going to know who to follow or what so I'm saying to you. If you just go to the laws of Almighty God in the 1688 Will and Mary and just go to that and stay with that and focus on that. And anytime any one of those groups does anything repugnant to that, 
you go to the court and get a declaration. That's what you need to be doing. Now, they have presently handed over Australia to the Aboriginals, New Zealand, to the Maori. They, the Maori have, didn't have enough people, so they handed New Zealand over to the islanders, and they're trying to put us all under tribal rule. That's where they're putting us under. And under tribal rule, they've decided to divide it up, divide up all of our countries, and the tribal rule is going to be in, in each part of the country is going to be up to that tribal rule. And there's going to be a place for the Muslims to have theirs, a place for the Jews to have theirs. Now, they already tried this in the Ottomans, and it ended up that the two religions of, of Islamic and uh, uh, Jewish and Catholic, well, the three of them actually, they overcome all the people because it's, it's not so much, well, it is, they breed like rabbits. They've got laws that they should have 10 kids to one wife and their wife doesn't work. And how they do that is they've set up corporations through our government to take all the money where all our people work, husband and wife, and we are only able to have one or two kids because we're taxed so highly, uh, rented so highly, that we cannot afford to have any more than two kids. And then they're adding on to that homosexuality, abortion, all of that. And so we're being decimated and they overcome us. Their vision of the world is to only have their corporations. They only want people in their corporations, but their religions have splits as well. Brian Tamaki is one of the people that has left those and he's opened up his own corporation. So then you've got the Indonesians have got their various there's, there's corporations all over the place. It's just, just madness, but I'm just like, but always remember this, your entire country is a corporation and you don't have any power over those religions and their corporations because you have to go through their leaders and they only allow their leaders to manage their corporations. But the one corporation that you do have power over is your country, your nation's corporation. And you are permitted to go to the court of law, not a court of the church, but a court of law when they are doing anything repugnant to the corporation of your country. So this is why they are not allowed, Muslims, Catholics, and, and Jewish people are not allowed to govern in the corporation of our country because they belong to a mini state within our country, within our nation. And so when they get their people into government, and this is what's happened in New Zealand and in, in England, when they get their people in the government, they don't allow anyone that's not in their corporation, in their little mini state to get into the government. So our parliaments are filled with foreigners, which is repugnant, Islamists, Zionists, and Catholics. And that's, that's what's wrong at the moment. And your only way is to go to the court and get a declaration to, to that effect. Um, so all of this came about, has happened, since 1972, when Lexis Nexus took over the Butterworths Queen's Law Company in, um, in, in 1970, around about 1968, it actually occurred. And then there's been a progression since then. All right. So, um, but Lexis Nexus has not been upholding the 1688 Almighty God's Law. So, um, what they've been doing now is, a, a, I, I've put it in my court case, is a thing called a waterboarding of laws. And, and I'm going to show you this law here. So uh, did I show you? So we should always keep, we're all, the only law, what they're going to be showing you is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. They're waterboarding with you, you with law. They're waterboarding you with religion. They're waterboarding you with confusion 
of wars and all of these things. And so you're going to be feeling you, it's, it's going to get so desperate that people are either going to be not doing good things to themselves or they're going to just shut the doors of their houses and they're going to shut down. And this is what's happening to people at the moment. And this is why I've opened uh, the Ministry of Deconfusion. All right. And you can come to my entertainment channel of the Ministry of Deconfusion. Now, in the Ministry of Deconfusion, we don't look at any of their laws. We only follow one law and one almighty God. And that's going to save us. And so we go to there and we every time they put out a law, we're going to go to there and we're going to say, is it repugnant? And if it's repugnant, we're going to start our preparations to, to learn. And that, so what, how, what do we need to do now? Now what you need to do is to arm yourself. Okay, I'll go here and I'll show you in our um, 1688. All right, we're on 13, so I've got 15 minutes. So I'll try to um, keep this to 15 minutes. Okay. So we're going to go to our um, Ministry of Deconfusion and in the Ministry of Deconfusion, well, this is called the Bill of Rights here, which is the 1688, but you do have to be a little bit careful because what they have done is um, we come from the 1688, as I've told you, I don't know why I haven't put it up there. So I've put it up, 1688, Will and Mary, so uh, this is the true one. Now, this law here is actually, the, this actual law is not an act. Do you see that? It's not an act and it can't be changed. But how is it that they've been making all these changes that have been repugnant? Well, what, what they've done is they took it and they placed it into an act. Well, it's not really an act here either, but they've placed it. What they've done is they've placed it into legislation and when they place it into legislation what you'll see here is that they can make changes and so you see here they've made a change here in the schedules and you can go to these sections that they've made these changes and so they would never be able to do that to this here you see you come and look here and this is actually the will and mary and then in this one here, they haven't made changes. The only one that can make a change to this and possibly he even can't is the king. Even if the king made a change to this, you can challenge it because it's got a law in there. This, you see this one is very hard to read it because it's all written as one and that's the way it should be. And it can't even ever be changed, but if you see it now in here, they've broken it up. So you see here, you see where it says supremacy. Um, where does it start? So this here starts from the supremacy. Starting from the supremacy, everything's written in one section. But you'll see in our one, you'll see supremacy and you'll see that they've broken it up into easier manageable sections that you can use you see that but once they did that when they broke it up into sections they were able to make changes and it's these changes that have caused us all of the problem but we're not going to worry about that just now just now we're only going to be um just now we're not going to be quite worried about that we're going to be just looking at where are they violating now? Under our 1688, uh, what you'll see here, I want everybody to understand this one that says that subjects which are Protestants may have arms for their defense suitable for their conditions and is allowed by law. Now, you all, that is not the same as you're entitled to bear arms. So the arms that we were given as Protestants and the only reason that we were given this arm um, was because the three religions had uh, the three religions had laws of decapitation and burning alive and poor quartering, as I just told you. 
but this one is an arm of protection that when they, when they made a law that was repugnant to our 1688, that we were permitted to, to um, go to the court and uh, ask the court for a declaration. And what it says here, if you look here, if you go to the, um, um, if you go to the, just a minute, Uh, if you go to here, the, it says that if ever it says that they are, they have to. We de demand that um, no declarations, no judgments, no doings, no proceedings to the prejudice of the people in any of these pre premises. None of them would ever be made repugnant, and if they do, the only means for for, for getting that addressed is by getting a declaration in the court. So you need to get a declaration in the court. And that's what they're talking about, about the subject's arms of protection, all right? Now, one of the things that they had in our 1688, Will and Mary, is that we have the right to petition to the king and all commitments and prosecutions for such petitioning are illegal. Presently, my case is in the court and they've tried to hit me with $14,000 worth of fees because I've asked them, I've gone to the court about a repugnancy to the supremacy that says no foreign prince or foreign state. Now, when we're talking about a state, so anybody that is from the state of Catholic, Islamist or Jewish, they're not permitted to govern over us. They're not allowed to because of the laws that they've got which were first in time. And whenever any of the people from those religions are in our parliament, they're in a perpetual state of conflict because in order for them to uphold our Will and Mary rights of protection, they have to go against the laws of burning at the stake, four-quartering, decapitation. They have to go against that. And if they go against that, then they've gone against their religion. And the penalty for going against their religion is death. So that's why they're not allowed in our parliament, because they're not able to work in, with one leg in each court. It simply is not possible for them to do that. So they're not permitted. And so I've gone to the court um, to address this issue about certain laws of the United Nations that they've brought and then also putting us under tribal law. They're trying to put us under a thing called tikanga law, which is Maori tribal law. And I'm saying it's repugnant. So they've hit me with $14,000. And then so I've hit them with that it, they all commitments for petitioning the king are illegal and all prosecutions for petitioning the king are illegal, which means that if they hit me with a fine for petitioning the king and then I don't pay it and they want to prosecute me for that, that would be illegal. So they're being illegal there. So that's what we're saying. Now, that's not what we're talking. So I'm using these three at the present day. The right to petition uh, should be free. Then I'm using that it is the right for us to have arms, our arms to for defence are the law. That's our arms for defence. And then I'm using here, but the only means is to get a declaration as to be the remedy within. Now, um, now um, uh, I, got, I got sent this thing here from a man called, now there's many common law people and they've been a great help to me, but I've just gone, I'm, I'm not going to apologise for the things that I do, but I've gotten quite a lot. Now, this is from Andy Devine, and he's working with the Moai Crown, John Wanoa, who's a very, very famous person, and Andy Devine. So he had sent to me, he had sent to me a thing called, um, right, am I going to get with him? I've only got 10 minutes to go. Can I do it? So he had sent to me a thing called Maxim's Law. Now, this Maxim's Law in, in the Court of in the court of Deconfusion, Kate Floss Court of Deconfusion, um, we're going to use this Maxim's Law 
that um, uh, I think his name is Andrew Devine. He's given it to me and we use it together with our 1688 Will and Mary and you'll see that these two match up like a glove. They're like a glove, all right? So this is what I think that my dream was all about. My dream was all about that Will and Mary came to visit me and our house was perfect. And then they said, right, now we can't stay with you. You've got to do this on your own. We've all got to do this on our own now. So we've got to learn about this. And when we learn about it, we've got to, Will and Mary are going to leave us and it's us that's got to go and, and take it to fix our house that's falling apart. Now, I'll go to share screen and I'll show you this Maxim's law and I'll talk about the laws. I'll show you the laws that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, the main laws, all right? So in the Maxim's law, um, we'll go here to see the common sense law. Now, the common sense is usable in the court so everything in here comes from the Will and Mary, all of it. And so if you go to here, you'll be able to use it in the court. And I'll try and put it up in the thing for you. And Andy says, if you click on any one of them, it will take you to the law where you can use it. I'm looking for the common sense here. Now, here's the common sense law. And under the common sense law, it says, the one that I like is, no man is bound um, it says here whatever is done in excess is prohibited by law so that's what they're doing at the moment and that's in my case that i said to them that the government and the religions are waterboarding us with law they are constantly putting now new laws every day we've got a COVID thing going on now we've got a monkeypox thing going on we've got a war going on we've got they're changing us over to the lexus nexus law we've got them producing act after act after act law after law after law and it's it's now it's just not good for you to let yourself be amongst all of that chaos you are never going to be able to figure it out. So what we're going to do is we're not going to do that, but we've gone to the court to say to them that whatever is done in excess is prohibited by law and a waterboarding of laws, all of those laws, you no, need, no longer need to follow them because of the confusion that they've created. They've created them in excess. They've created them in confusion and that is prohibited. And so we're not going to be following them anymore. Now, the next one was, uh, we're going to be going to the customs. I want you to see this today, the customs, what is done to the ancestors. Now, this is uh, what, what here it says, what is done contrary to the custom of our ancestors, neither pleases nor appears right. Now, um, all of our countries, in the United Kingdom, Scotland, Ireland, Australia, and New Zealand, and including the Aboriginals and including the natives, but specifically the native um, Maori in New Zealand, they made contracts with the Queen and with the people that were brought to New Zealand. And they, in the 1865 native rights, said that we would always be protected under the 1688 Bill of Rights of our ancestors. So whatever customary laws that they're trying to infuse in the court at the moment, you don't come under any of them. You can go to the court and get a declaration and say, I don't come under any of those customary laws. I've got my ancient law and I would like to have a declaration confirming that this is the law that I stand under, almighty God, one law. And, uh, and you can, and whenever they try and put their laws onto you, you can renounce every single one of them and stand under your ancient law. Um, the next one is the fraud. And so there's many things in here, but in this one, it says here, um, a fraud is no, no action out of fraud um, shall arise. Uh, hang on. 
good and just you. Here, this is the important one that I wanted to talk about here. Often it is the new road, not the old one, which deceives the traveler. So in the Kate Floss Court of Deconfusion, it is, it's these new laws that are causing all the confusion. So I'm saying to all of you that are in a confused state, go back to your old one almighty law of one Jesus and almighty God, stay with that law and you won't go wrong. Don't worry about all of the rest of them. Um, so that's the ones that we're going to be using out of thought. Now, there's an important thing. So, so that's, um, so I'll just um, turn, I won't, I won't turn that off, but that's where I'm getting my things from, but I'll stop sharing there. So what I want to talk to you today is about uh, all the confusion, uh, the Lexus Nexus law, the fact that you're no longer under the Queen's law of England, the fact that there's a war going on over in Russia, Ukraine, but that the real war, while you're looking over there, the real war is going on in the Pacific, where they're handing over our country to America and China and Russia want to prevent that. They're not happy about it. They were happy with us all under England and that was fine. They're not happy about us going under America and Israel. A lot of them see America as being closely aligned with Israel and, 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 and being ruled by Jewish laws. So that's why they're not happy about this. So that's just one of the things going on. Um, and um, what has happened to us, so I'm going to show you where all this began, okay? So this all began, uh, you can go and research this later, but what they've, one of the things that they've been doing, I'll just show you my 1688 again. You'll find me going to the 1688 quite a lot. And so one of the things that I have put into the court about to complain about is this law. So I'm always working from the Will and Mary. I think I can work from the Will and Mary, right, for this bit. Sometimes I go to the other one just because it's easier to read. But if you go to the Will and Mary, why did they throw the king out? And one of the reasons was, one of the reasons was exactly what they're doing to, that they were prosecuting, they were committing and prosecuting the people for humbly petitioning the court. And that, that's exactly what they're doing. They are prosecuting us and they are making us pay huge fines just because we want to go to the court with our, um, to petition the court. And, and so that comes, that's why they threw that king out. That's one. The next one is that, um, uh, hang on. Uh, hang on, I'm looking for laws prosecuting, issuing, causing. Raising a standing army, causing the Protestants to be disarmed. There's many in here. The King's Court, uh, King's Bench matters, cognizable Parliament, diverse other aren't very um, excessive. All right. So in this one here, uh, it says, and whereas of late uh, they have been placing corrupt and unqualified persons into our parliaments to govern over us and into the juries to govern over us. And this is the one that I wanna to talk to you about today is about the unqualified persons that they've been putting into our parliament. And I've already placed this into the court. And um, as you know, I'm in the appeals now because they threw me out, but I'm petitioning that. So we're talking about the unqualified persons. Now, what has happened is, uh, I wanted to show you, get all confused here. Right, I'll stop sharing that. And I wanted to show you this bill that was in Parliament, all right? So I'll take that off. And this is a bill that was put into Parliament in 2016, all right? And so what you'll see here is, of course, you'll see the name Jacinda Ardern, who was all involved with this. 
But what you'll see here, this, now this has all been done in England as well. I move that the arbitration amendment bill, the senior courts bill, the district court bill, the judicial re review procedure bill, the interest on money claims bill, the electronics courts, the tribunals bill, the bills of exchange amendment bill, the building societies bill, the children's bill, the families bill, the companies bill, the contractual remedies bill, the copyright bill, the courts bill, the criminal procedure bill, um, the employment relations bill, the family courts bill, the solvency bill, the local government bill, the property bill, the remuneration bill, the resource management bill, the Tatua Whenua bill, the Trans Tasman bill, all of these, all of these 23 bills across a thousand pages uh, were all um, changed or removed or whatever. And they were talking about that they would, it replaces, they're saying all of this replaces one of the oldest statutes, which was the 108 year old Judicature Act, which also comes under the Declaratory Judgment Act of 1908. So all of this legislation was being changed. Now, don't just, don't even go there because as I've said, they are confusing. This comes under exactly what I was talking about of the common sense law is that when they waterboard you, uh, where, where did I have that law? When they waterboard you with law or they have too many laws, then that is a um, an abuse to you. It's, that's in the common sense law window. I put my common sense law in there. Sometimes I get my things mixed up. But anyway, under the common sense law, go and find that again. I'll try to do this for you, but it's, it's very, very hard because I'm still learning. You have to go and learn everything. We've got to learn everything all over again. At least the common sense is government, God and religion. So under the common sense law, um, it says that, oh yeah, whatever is in, done in excess is prohibited by law. And so you can see here, these excess laws here are called omnibus. Their omnibus, the omnibus legislation was passed, I think it might've been passed in 2012, but anyway, the omnibus legislation says that they can take, they, it was supposed to be for minor changes to an existing law, but they've abused that. And then they've turned around and used it to change all our legislation. And this one here would come under that, that this has done whatever is done in excess. You can see that there's an excess here and it would be very difficult for any of us to know what laws they're signing us up to. And what they did is they took us out of the Queen's law and they took us into the Lexus Nexus law in America. And that's what all this big fight is about. Now, um, Jacinda Ardern, uh, there was a predecessor and she was saying, Mr. Assistant Speaker, thank you. The minister's contribution to the discussion, of course, is the judicial Picture modernization bill, which is split into 23 separate bills, and it was all passed under one in one reading. The whole lot was passed in one reading. And the Prime Minister, the Minister of Justice, took over this bill from her predecessor. Now the predecessor goes all the way back to Muldoon, and they're saying that some of the legislation amended is 100 years old and it, they didn't just amend, what they did is they drastically changed all of the laws of our country and we just, and this, all this confusion is because it was done as an experiment to try and put us under tribal law um, and under Jewish law, Islamic law, um, Catholic law, tribal law, and Almighty God's law all in one. And it's a dismal, dismal failure. And that's why we're at war today. That's why we're at war. 
in our country, out of our country, everywhere. And that's why all the countries left the Commonwealth because they knew what was coming down the pipeline. The only ones that didn't know was us in New Zealand. It was all done secretly behind closed doors. Now, the person that started this, the person that started this was a person here, and I'm going to show you the lawyers. We're not going to talk too much about these lawyers, but this one here was called Amy Adams. And what I'm, remember I just told you about in the 1688 that they were hiring unqualified persons. At the time that they started doing all of this, uh, the person that was the Minister of um, Justice was this woman here called Amy Adams. Now she's the person and she looks to me like she's, she's put makeup on her face, right? But she looks to me that she's got at least one Indonesian parent. I don't think that her parents are born to New Zealand. So it, 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 I think that she's tried to lighten herself up quite a bit. Um, but um, a lot of them hide their parentage. Now, she was under Prime Minister John Key, I, I think. And um, she was in power to the, as Minister of Justice from October, 14, uh, October 2014 and to October 2017. So that omnibus bill that I just showed you with all those law changes, she was the one that came in and signed it all off, signed off on it all. And I haven't looked at her predecessor because I couldn't find her. So I've just put her up for the present time, okay? And so, but as you heard Jacinda Ardern said that she's come in to take it over. So somebody else was in there putting all of the laws together and then she's come in, she's taken the helm to sign off on it all in the omnibus bus bill, omnibus bill. And you can look at her, let's go to look at her qualifications. Um, oh, her qualifications are quite hidden, all right? Um, so, but she was, oh, she had a bat, look, right? She went to the University of Canterbury and she had a Bachelor of Laws, okay? and first class honours. And so she was all down the South Island all around 2010 when they were changing the laws and everything. She was all involved with that. And she was also minister. Her sister, wow, her sister worked with Paula Bennett and Adams, her brother-in-law, David Ware was in telecommunications executive and um, she was public, he criticized Adam's actions while she was Minister for Communications. Okay, now if you go to Amy Adams, you can see here that she's got her curriculum vitae. And what you'll see here is that she had a Bachelor of Laws, she was a barrister, and a solicitor of the High Court of New Zealand. And she worked in trusts, many things. She worked for Mortlock McCormick Law Christchurch. She was a member of parliament for that short time. She was a cabinet minister and a senior member. But the fact of the matter is that, is that she was well qualified to her position, right? So she was the person that was, um, instrumental in signing off on that omnibus, omnibus law. And she was well qualified to do that, all right? So the next one that we're gonna to go to is followed up after her came, and you'll see him up on my board there, was Andrew Little. Now, today I'm not looking at, we're not saying anybody's done anything wrong. What we're looking at is qualifications. 
how qualified are they to be in their position? And I noticed something strange. Now, when I went to look at Andrew Little, and he was the Minister of Justice um, from 2017 to 2020, he was the Minister of Justice and he was preceded by Amy Adams. Now, let's go and look at Andrew Little. He's a very, very, very clever man and well qualified to his job. Um, he was member of parliament. Usually they put their qualifications. I had it before. So he was a member of the trade union, minister of health. He was a secretary for the largest trade union, engineering, manufacturing, and he was a president. Uh, oh, go to his early life. <coughs> Tells about him. He was born in Plymouth. <coughs> and his father was a national supporter. And um, he went and did a job, then he finished his work and he entered university and he studied law, philosophy, public policy at the Victoria University of Wellington. Then he became active in campaign against the student loan, camp, student loan scheme. And he was in the Wellington Students Association, Union Association. Um, he graduated and took a job as a lawyer uh, for the ACC and he worked in employment law. And then he um, was ranked as New Zealand's listeners power list. He's very, very extremely qualified to his position of law. So we don't worry about Andrew Little anytime. Uh, so we can say that both Amy, we can say that both Amy, let's see, Minister of Justice, Um, we can see that uh, both Amy Adams, all right, there's Amy Adams, and we can see that Andrew Little were both qualified solicitors and qualified to their position uh, when those omnibus laws were put through. But here's the strange thing. Who followed up from Andrew Little? So you know that Amy Adams and Andrew Little had extremely good qualified legal degrees, had worked in commercial law, employment law, a wide range between the two of them. And it was the two of them that put together and, and signed off on all of these omnibus laws that I showed you. But do you know what they brought in next was Tikanga Law. Lexus Nexus. Lexus Nexus didn't get proacclimated into New Zealand law until 2020. And who did they put in to manage? Now they're trying to get New Zealand and infuse into the court, and they're opening up a whole bunch of courts in New Zealand to manage Tikanga Law or tribal law. And it's tribal law or indigenous law that comes under the Torah, Jewish law, the Quran, Islamic law, the Book of Job or the Canon law, all of that comes under indigenous laws. And then they've called this thing, the Maori law is called Tikanga law, and the Aboriginal law is called the Dreamtime law. So they've got all their laws, right? That's why I had the dream last night about all these laws that they've got. And then who do you think they put in to manage that? Do you think that they put in a New Zealand Maori? No. All the Pacific is going to go under one area of law. And I think the Aboriginals are going to go under another lot. And then they've just put a marae which the Marais in New Zealand are considered to be the law houses of the New Zealand Maori. They've just built one on the tribal lands of Australia. So they've put it in there. So I don't really quite know what's going on here, but let me show you about the people that, so they brought in Chris Farfoy, who you'll see, here's Chris Farfoy up on my board here. 
all right? So we've got Andrew Little, who managed all that law with Amy Adams, and then they brought in Chris Barfoy. Now let's have a look at Chris Barfoy's qualifications. Chris Barfoy, he doesn't actually say where he was born, but he was born of Tokoloian, um, Tokoloian parents, all right? So it, he never says where he was born. It just says that he was born on the 23rd of June in 1976. And let's go and have a look. And, and his, both of his parents were brought over to New Zealand from Tokelau, a place called Whaka, Whaka Ofa. And I think that he is a Matai chief, meaning a very high up leader from over there. All right. Um, he uh, let's see. He's he, Chris Farfoy, was a journalist, you see, and he graduated, he is a graduate of the New Zealand Broadcasting School, Institute of Canterbury. And he worked for the BBC as a political commentator. And then he just decided, or somehow New Zealand just decided that we could jump from a qualified Andrew Little and a qualified um, Amy Adams as our ministers of justice. And they decided that we could put in a journalist to be our minister of justice. So he became the minister, he has been the Minister of Civil Defence, the Minister of Customs. These are all the ministerials. He's been the Minister of Immigration. He's been the Minister of Commerce. How does a journalist get to be the Minister of Commerce? He was the Minister of Commerce. He was the Minister of Digital Services. He's been the Minister of the Civil Defence. He's been the Minister of Customs. And they've removed, have they removed it? Oh no. And he is the Minister of Justice, just stepped down. And his qualification in law is non existent. He has presently stepped down, all right? And wait till you see who he's been replaced with. All right. He is, oh, can you see that? I don't know. I've been sharing the screen. Oops. All right, here you go. So here's Chris Farfoy, and here's his qualifications. A trained journalist graduate of the New Zealand Broadcasting School. And then voila, they thought that he would be great to act as our Minister of Justice when our country is in a, a health crisis, a, we've gone to war, we're in war, they have changed our entire legal system from the Queen's law to LexisNexis American law. They have putting us under tribal law and they thought that it would be a great idea that Chris Barfoy, who has no history in our country, he's born to Tokoloian parents, he's not even born to New Zealand parents, he's got no history in New Zealand, his allegiance is to the islands, he has no allegiance to New Zealand whatsoever, they decided that he would be a great minister of justice for us. But that doesn't end there, he stepped down all right, because he's unqualified, but look who they put in his place. They've decided to put in his place Curry Allen. Now, Curry Allen, she's New Zealand born, uh, she was born in 1984. She, she's a new, it doesn't say where she was born. Oh, yeah, it does say she was born in Te Karaka. It doesn't say who her parents were and they usually hide the parentage now, and usually their island of parentage. And she's one of 10 
children. Immediately you hear the word 10 children, you know that she belongs to one of those religious sects. And usually they don't, when they've got 10 children, they usually, oftentimes they come, they've got an island parent. And because they're of the Mormon heritage or the Catholic heritage, and so they have very, very, very large families. And that's why they're taking over our countries at the moment because they have bred us out. They outnumber us so many because of their breeding practices that and all the abortions that they're forcing on us and all of the homosexuality that they're forcing on us, on the Protestants, we can't um, keep up with their numbers anymore. And so they've overwhelmed us. It, it's been, they've been, do, this has been in, in process for 400 years. And so since we created the 1688, um, they've been attacking us since then in secret. And they've just, everything that's happening now is the pro agglomation of what they've been doing for 400 years to get out of our almighty God's law against Jesus. So they're killing Jesus a second time. Now let's, I, we, anyway, no offence to that, but let's just ask what were Curry's qualifications. Well, let's see. She dropped out of high school at 16 and she went to work at KFC. Mm -hmm. And then she joined the Food Workers Union and became a cherry picker. She was a cherry picker. She was. And she studied, well, then after she did all that, she studied law and politics at Victoria University of Wellington. But it doesn't say that she got any kind of a degree. I've studied law. You can go to the university and you can do one section of law and say, I studied law. It, it doesn't mean anything. So they've decided that she, uh, after that, she went to work at a law firm called Chen Palmer. Well, and that's probably where Jeffrey Palmer comes out of, I suppose. Wow, talk about keep it in the family. So she worked, uh, is that where Jeffrey Palmer worked at? So she went to work at that law firm. And so... It's kind of, you can see where they're going now. So later, she was a commercial lawyer and a business consultant, whatever that means. What are the qualifications for being a commercial lawyer? I don't know. But she has recently became the new Minister of Justice to take over from, um, from Chris Farfoy was over here so there's Chris Farfoy and then and then then there's Cree Allen so that's those two there but then so I want you to just focus on that right I've gone quite a bit over so then we want to go and look at so we know that we had we had Amy Adams, a very qualified um, lawyer, probably working with LexisNexis, and then, and I would say, I wonder about her background if she has an American background, or husband, or parents. Then we had Andrew Little, and he came in very qualified working and he had worked extensively throughout New Zealand in various roles and both of those were very involved in in two sections one section one did one lot the other one did the other lot they were all at the helm when they scooped up all of our ancient laws and all of the old laws and rewrote everything they were in power and then they brought in Chris Barfoy, a Tokoloian, who has absolutely no um, law qualification at all. And now they've brought in 
Kerry Allen. So I'm assuming she worked for Chen Palmer. I'm assuming that it's these two. It was it was Chris Barfoy that was instrumental in getting the Declaration of Inconsistency for the 1990 Bill of Wrongs, which is a United Nations law, workers' right. So he was instrumental in that. And then Kerry Allen, who's had a little bit of experience, and she reckons that she's done some law course at the university. It possibly could have been in Tikanga law, which is Maori tribal law. It could have been that. Then she worked, went to work for what, who I think is Jeffrey Palmer's office. That's about all she's got. So we've got two unqualified lawyers bringing in this tikanga law, all right? And then we want to look at who is our minister. minister. So that's those two. So she's the Minister of Justice. All right. So now I want to show you who is the Minister of Courts. Okay. So we, we need to focus, you know, we don't focus on Parliament. We need to focus on the courts and how we're going to go about going to the court and get our declarations. That's what we need to focus on. You forget about everything else. It's just noise, it's noise. Take all the noise out and come to the court of Cape Floss, the court of their confusion. We'll have to make a website for the court of their confusion. Now, um, so you'll see here, now I encourage England, Scotland, Ireland to go and look at all this. So here we've got Kerry Allen, and she's the Minister of Justice. She's also the Associate Minister of Finance. And as you can see from a qualification, now we've got another person who was complaining about all of the unqualified finance ministers presently being put up. And so she's the Associate Minister of Finance, and you saw that she's got no qualification in that. Arts, culture, she can do it, heritage environment um, and she also manages conservation and emergency management. Um, I don't know what her qualifications are for any of that but as far as I know her highest qualification was at the cherry picking farm working for the union there. That, that, that was her highest and the KFC which she might have got a bit of management in there. That's about the extent of Curry Allen's management skills. So um, she's a member of the Maori Caucus, the Rainbow Caucus, whatever that is, the Women's Caucus, and shaping this new world that they've decided that we're going to be in called Ati Aroha. Um, so she did manage an agricultural business on the East Coast and some farms and forestries. So it says that she practiced commercial and public law in Wellington, but it, I, I'm not sure about that because that could mean anything. That, it doesn't show that she's qualified in any of those. Now then, so then, then look who we've got. So she's Minister of Justice. Now look who we've got is Minister of Courts. And here's Minister of Courts. And our PJ William CO is, He's from Samoa, and he is a high Maatai chief from Samoa, and he works very intricately with America. They've already gone over to America, but they, before they dumped the queen and went over to America, they wrote, America wrote them a rock solid constitution forbidding foreigners to govern in Samoa. They did it for the, any of the Samoan islands that signed up to America during the time of Lexus Nexus. 
They've got rock solid constitutions forbidding any foreigners in their parliament. And New Zealand didn't get that. The New Zealand Maori didn't, that, I think they've overwhelmed our New Zealand Maori and they've waterboarded them with law as I did show you in the, um, in the common sense law that, 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 that when there are too many laws and they became overwhelmed. Now his qualification is that he used to be a bishop, uh, I think in the Mormon church, but he was a bishop. And one day he just said, I'm not going to be a bishop anymore. I'm going to be a politician. And he went to work for the Mongaray office. And then after two years, he came to parliament and he is the minister of courts, strangely enough. Now we've got Calvin Davis, he's the minister of the crown relations. And then we've got, don't worry about those two. I'm more focused on these two here. How is it that we have got a minister of justice with absolutely not a single qualification in justice, never probably walked, worked in a courtroom in her life. She's the minister of justice and she's also associate minister of finance and not qualified. And how is it that we've got a Samoan, a Samoan high chief who is the minister of courts and also the associate minister of justice. Well, it's like the blind leading the blind. She's blind, he's blind, and she's the one that's supposed to be leading him. And then I'm not sure who the associate, oh yeah, the associate minister of the courts is a man that used to work for Oxfam. So these are the people that are in our um, unqualified people that are in our parliament. So uh, when we're going to, when we're going to our 1688 Bill of Rights, I'm going to wrap it up now. I'm quite finished now. But that I said to you, we only are interested, we are not interested in what they're doing anymore. Because what we what we do know is that they are waterboarding us, that they are creating confusion all around us, and then they're changing a whole bunch of laws. And you know what's going to happen? What's going to happen in about three or four years from now, when all this chaos is over, when all of you have gone to your doors and locked your doors and buried your head in the sand because you can't bear it? You know what that's going to happen? There's going to be a cooling off time. It's everything will become cooled off and they will leave all of this chaos to sit there for a while. They're all gonna, they're all out in the frenzy. When the majesty passes, there's going to be a cooling off period. After the cooling off period happens, all of you are going to be passed away. All of these people are going to be gone from Parliament, just like Chris Farfoy, Ashley Bloomfield is leaving the country, Chris Farfoy is leaving the country. They're all going to leave the country and they'll go and live in foreign lands. And all these laws and all of this destruction of our um, nation that we built in 1865, from 1835 through to 1865, everything that we built together, that's all going to be destroyed and they'll wait till we're all dead or they'll kill us off with their injections. And then it's your children that are going to have to be living with these. Now, if we go to our 1688, I'm almost finished now. So we'll go to our 1688. We'll go to, um, uh, I'm just going to um, presently use I'm just going to present, oh yeah, I can still use, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over to the, you can see here that this is the um, Will and Mary and everything that we need, we use from here, okay, but we can go to our 1688 um, Bill of Rights New Zealand, I don't use it. but I use it just for reading because it's easier. But when I go to the court, I'm not using it these days um, because this is not the, you can still use it, but 
this is the one that you use in the court um, to get your entry into the court. But once you use it to get your entry into the court, then you can use your will and marry. So this is quite the problem because they will reject you if you use um, the will and marry, they'll reject you. Because the will and marry, this will and marry is not in legislation, okay? But it's this 1688, which is in legislation. And in order to use laws in the court, you've got to use laws that are in legislation. But you can get into the court using this legislation, right? But when you're in there, you can also use, uh, don't forget to throw in there as well, the will and marry as your backup, because this is from the king, okay? So um, what was I going to say to you? It, I'm focused on here because it says to you in here that the only means for obtaining a full redress to get these people, do you see you've got these people here, the first piece here will tell you why the king was removed and he was removed. So if you see in the maxim of law, anything in excess, that can include laws or bail or anything that's in excess is illegal. Um, but Oh, but here is in this, it's illegal to have unqualified persons have been returned and served on juries and trials and particularly drivers, jurors in trials for high treasons were not freeholders. These people here, they're unqualified people. They're partial. They are partial. That means that they're working towards only their own specific race or their own specific religion or their own specific um, causes, that means that they're partial, okay? They are corrupt. How are they corrupt? They're corrupt because they're not supposed to be in the court in the first place and they know well these laws and they know they're not supposed to be there. That is a corruption there and that the corruptness is that they are unqualified, that a minister of justice who's never even been to the law school, that's an unqualified person. Unqualified is when they are ministers of finance, when they've never even done a single degree or, or really just because you've worked slightly in corporate, uh, in, in commercial law, doesn't mean that you should be in the position of finance in the state that our country's in at the moment. The state that our country is in at the moment, we need qualified people in there, nothing to do with race or religion, but we need qualified people in there. And then the other thing is um, that um, um, uh, El Pito William Zio, the Minister of Courts, he's partial. If you go and look at his website, he only works for Pacific people. And they're setting up separate courts. They want to have a separate court for Muslims, a separate court for the Jews, a separate court for the Mormons, a separate court for the Maori, a separate court for the Pacifica, and no separate court for us. We're going under all of their courts. We don't get a separate court. And so this is, this is, this is called ruling by division. And that is illegal here because that comes under... That comes under the limitation of the crown. And the limitation of the crown is that they are forbidden, absolutely forbidden of, to rule by division. And that's what they're doing, setting up separate courts, setting up separate police, setting up separate caucus rooms at the parliament. That's called ruling by division. And that's called a pretended title of the crown. So that all comes under there. You see, so you can use, and that it all comes under that maxim of law as well, which we'll talk about later. Today, I'm just introducing you to all of the things, and I'm going to try and post up. I'm only going to post up two things today. I'll post up for you in the YouTube. I'll post up. Don't forget to click and subscribe, and don't forget to donate to Kate Floss if you've enjoyed 
my videos. Um, if you've enjoyed my videos, don't forget to donate um, to Kate Floss, which I'll put up on the screen in a minute. Now, I, I do spend, I'm not, uh, I'm trying to get out of the court fees and what I'm trying to get fee waiver is that we get caught for free, but it still does take me a long time to research these videos. It still does take me a long time uh, to try and put it together. So if you want to um, come to the, the uh, to Kate, Kate Floss Court, then you can put in a donation for me if you want to, okay? So I'll put up the um, waiver. Now, I do want to show you one last piece if you've got a couple more minutes, my five minutes, that's going to be, our video is going to be around about an hour and a half, I think. But if you turn it up to speed, you can turn the video up, up to speed. And um, right, I'll turn all these things off. So I'll turn off that. And I'll turn off that. And I'll turn off all of that. And I'll post up the maxim of laws for you. And that came from Andy Devine. That didn't come from me. And that's from the Mo'ai. Now, some of these little common law places, um, he's got the Mo'ai court's bench. He's going after the king's bench. He wants to go after the whole caboodle and the whole lot under the king's bench. So that's what they're doing. It's a much bigger thing that I'm doing. I'm only going after in New Zealand. I'm after in New Zealand and protecting New Zealand and the Commonwealth. I'm after the Commonwealth and I'm going into our own court. So we're kind of doing the same thing, but we're just coming at it from a different angle. But when there's all this confusion, all these religions and all this confusion going around, what you need to do is, is watch out because you don't know who to follow. So I only follow one law, which is the almighty God's law. That's the law that I follow. Um, but if you're in all this confusion, then just go to your 1688 and learn how to do that. So um, I do want to show you, just to prove to you, I did find a video today. I think I've still got it down here, have I? Oh, and I've just ruined it. All oh, right, here. Okay. So I'll put it on play. So I just want to show you that the courts have changed. All right. Oh. Okay, next down there. Yes. No, I'll just put that off there. All right, the last bit. So I want to share screen, and you can see here that I've got, um, this is talking about a Robin Cook lecture. ...on a high court in the Filipino development. And for as long as the common law of England remained the dominant source of precedent in New Zealand, the law was constrained by the... ...it has been captured on the shoulder of the... So... ...ceremonial judicial robes. So these were designed... These are the new judicial robes. They've removed the robes of England and they've removed the wigs. Under the English law, they always had to wear the wigs. The wigs were removed in another video that I've seen. The wigs have been removed and we're coming under a new law called Aotearoha New Zealand law. All of the law of the Pacific Islands and the Aboriginals and the New Zealand Maori is going to be called Aotearoha laws, where you're going to have unqualified tribal laws, unqualified lawyers, unqualified everything, tribal laws. And then they've got this other one, which is going to be the New Zealand law, which is going under LexisNexis, which is the American law system under inalienable law. And so she's just talking about the new uh, robes. And you, you take a look at the robes here and, you know, it's only a matter of the time before they drop the word New Zealand and what you're going to be under is Aotearoha 
and Indigenous. New Zealand is going to be one Indigenous place where they're going to bring Indigenous groups of the Israeli, um, the Islamic, the, um, um, the Indonesian, uh, the Indian, the, which is the um, um, Krishna law. Um, they're going to bring all of them into one country. And I think in my conspiracy theory, it's going to be New Zealand. And each one, this is all of it is an experiment. And it's an experiment that's going very, very downhill, very, very fast. The drums of war are beating. So we've got to be aware uh, and and the war that we, the war that we need to be do, doing now is a learning war. We have to learn what's going on. So you'll notice here that it's red, black, and gold. And you'll notice the flag that they want to use. The if you put up here the Maori flag, you'll see here. Oh, I don't know if you can see here. Can you see the flags? Yes. You'll see here they've got two flags. They're flying this one, which is red, white, and black. And then the other flag, that's because there's two lots of tribes. This one is United Nations. This is a refugee flag that was instituted. It's run by an organisation called Corso. And they were listed by... Prime Minister Muldoon as a terrorist organisation, and they were thrown out of New Zealand in the time of Muldoon. Unfortunately, they got the better of them and they threw out Muldoon. There's in, in heraldic colours, in the heraldic colours, white and gold mean the same thing. So if you see, you can see black, gold and red, or you can see black, white and red. You see our flag is always red, blue, and white. Whenever you're seeing black, white, and red, these are the dangerous colors. Now they've got the other flag. This is the new homosexual flag that they're bringing all the homosexuals into the country. And New Zealand is going to be the first country to have its an, an entire ministry called the Homosexuality Ministry. They're wanting to have a homosexual ministry and a homosexual flag. So this is what's all going on here. Um, but this flag here, um, this uh, one here is also um, blue, black, and red. It's a little bit different. And then if you look here, we've only got red. There's no blue on here. So it might be the Moai crown is using this one with the black. I encourage them to use, I encourage them, I agree with them that they should go under the King's Court bench. I agree with all of that. But I'm saying to them that they should have the white here, which is the St. George's Cross, and that will put them safely in the King's Court bench, but they argue with me about that, so I won't argue. But this one here is the United Nations refugee flag. I've done a video on it, but I better do another one. So this is the colours of the new judges' robes. This is significant in our history. We are experiencing a complete changeover of our laws. And to reflect the two founding cultures of New Zealand, the garment is based on the traditional black gown worn by barristers and judges to reflect our common law heritage. But the fabric from which it is constructed incorporates elements that reflect our unique heritage and traditions. Cody cones and leaves are the underlying design uh, embedded in the black weave of the fabric. And the image on the right, is it on your right? Yes, it's on your right is a close-up of the braid on the edge of the robe. This is a potama pattern used on tukutuku panels and in other Māori art forms and symbolises whakapapa as well as progressive levels of learning and intellectual achievement. To some, it represents the steps the god Tāne ascended in climbing to the highest 
of the heavens in his quest for knowledge. There he retrieved three baskets of knowledge, Te Kiti Tuatea, the basket of light, Te Kiti Tuoli, the basket of darkness, and Te Kiti Aronui, the basket of pursuit. The imagery of these three woven kiti is... So what you'll see here is that the queen has been removed and you're now going under tribal law. They're putting all of you under tribal law and they've got their three baskets. And what they've basically done is removed almighty God from your courtrooms. Now, they can't remove it from you if you go and call to it. But if you don't call, then that's going to be very bad for you. So we, that's why we're going to be using. But you'll see here that the queen is gone and we've been replaced by three baskets, one of the sky, one of the darkness, one of light, one of dark. Now, this is very bad because under our um, ancient law, we only are within light, not darkness. And so they've brought darkness into our courts of law together with light. I think that is, is indicative of, of what's going on in our lives with all this darkness and the darkness overwhelms the light. It just only depends on what kind of person that you have in there if they're going to overwhelm uh, the, the light. And if you get that, that is why our law, that is why our law under almighty God doesn't have a darkness. It only has light. And the reason is because all the people working in those positions are supposed to be impartial. They're supposed to be qualified to their position. And they're supposed to not be corrupt. They're supposed to be in the heavenly realms above man, above the people and their fighting and the religions. They're supposed to be above all of that. And so therefore, in the heavenly realm, there should be no darkness. And so they've decided that there should be light and darkness within the court. This is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. I don't know who's leading them, but the black was never a good color. We came under blue. Blue was the color of the, uh, of the, um, of the commoner people and the common law and they've removed the blue. So you, you all know that they've got the flags flying. The only problem is there was, was a battle over which flag was gonna rule, whether it would be the, um, the, um, the, the 8.1 with, um, with the black outline and the St. George, with, it's not a St. George if it's got a black outline anyway, or if it was going to be this red, black, and white flag. And it looks like, going by the judges' colours, it looks like the King's Court bench has been ruled out, and it looks like the refugee has been ruled in. So um, that's just where we are at the moment. I'm going to put up my screen for everyone to donate, if anybody wants to donate to me. Um, it just... The donation just helps me so that I don't have to go to work. I, I'm not working. Uh, because of the COVID, I have lost my job, but I have been able to go back to work for quite some time, but I have chosen not to so that I can keep doing this for you as best I can. But here we go. It don't, for goodness sakes, don't put it under Kate Floss, but it goes under um, CM Waterman, Caitlin Waterman. Um, it's the ASB Bank of New Zealand, CM Waterman, 1231670101305050. So if you want to donate any money to me, by all means, go and donate it to me um, so that I can, I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is to get it so that you can go into the court and have no court fees. That's the battle at the moment. Um, but anyway, it, it does help me if you put a wee bit in. But at the same time, every man and his dog at the moment is asking for donations. I hate to ask for them. Um, I, if you want to put a wee bit in, put a wee bit in. And if, if you're enjoying my videos and if you're not able to or if you put money in in other places, then don't. It's only if you're able to. All right. 
but I'll be doing this anyway, whether you put it in or not. And uh, okay, so Kate Floss signing out from the the court of the court of deconfusion, uh, uh, the ministry the ministry of deconfusion, and uh, and I'm the minister of deconfusion, working in the court of the ministry of deconfusion, and all things in here are for entertainment purposes only. All right. I'll see you later. I hope that worked out. I've tried my best. I'll smile for the camera. Yeah. My hat's true. Yeah, sure. Oh, I didn't stop recording, did I? I'll stop recording. I don't know how to stop it.